welcome back to Dimitra's Dishes. So today I'm going to teach you how to make a delicious twist on Vasilopita, which is a New Year's Eve bread or a New Year's bread. It's using my Tureki recipe. It's going to have a chocolate swirl in it and it's going to be divine and out of this world delicious. We're not going to go over the ingredients today because there are just a few steps, so we'll, we'll do each step at a time. First thing we have to do in our tabletop mixer fitted with the dough hook attachment. If you have one, take it out and use it. If not, you can totally do this by hand. We're gonna start by proofing the yeast. So in the mixer, we're gonna add half a cup of lukewarm milk. You want it to be nice and warm, not hot, so it doesn't kill the yeast, because that's gonna help the yeast get started. A little bit of all-purpose flour and a little bit of sugar. And a tablespoon of instant active dry yeast and we're just going to let this sit there for a little while I'll give it a mix so now most of the time the yeast has no problem and it works and it would be no problem to mix all of the ingredients in the mixer and mix them all at once and just knead them but um, it would be a real shame if the yeast was not alive or it went bad or something like that then everything will have to go in the garbage because the bread will just not work it won't rise so skipping this step is a no-no, it just, it just takes a few minutes and as soon as the clouds form on top, that's how you know that the yeast is active. Now in this bowl right here, I have some bread flour, about four cups of it. But you guys overseas that do not use the cups and ounces uh, measurements will be very happy to know that I weighed this out in grams and it's going to be in the written recipe down below in the description box as well as on the website because I know that all flours are different and it really is the weight that matters more than the cups but we'll talk about that another time. Just check out the recipe for those details. So in here we have four cups of bread flour and you're going to want to use bread flour not all-purpose flour for this then we're going to use the zest of an orange it's going to add such a nice fragrant fragrance to this mix then we're looking for the machlepi so a full heaping tablespoon of ground machlepi also known as mahlab the machlepi it's basically the ground uh, pits of a cherry very aromatic and nice and floral and you don't want to leave it out it's the characteristic taste and flavor of tsureki which is the greek brioche bread and try not to leave it out because there's really no substitute for it if you really can't find it and you want to put something else in that adds a little punch of flavor you could ground up uh ground up <laughs> you could grind up some cardamom seeds and put them in here or just use some extra vanilla extract now to this we're going to add our sea salt a little bit and then we're just going to mix these dry ingredients together. And the only thing that's left are some eggs. We're going to use two whole eggs with some milk. And last but not least, some vanilla extract. We're just going to whisk this all up. So once you see that your yeast is activated, you can just add all of the ingredients, the wet and the dry, the flour and the egg mixture. We're gonna beat that, we're gonna knead that actually on low speed for about eight minutes. And in the last two minutes, we're just gonna cut in about four tablespoons of unsalted butter and just put them in a little bit at a time and knead until it's all incorporated. So you want to transfer the dough to a bowl that has been well oiled, cover it in plastic wrap, set it aside in the warmest room in your house and let it rise until it's doubled in volume. That can take anywhere between an hour, hour and a half or two hours. I do have some quick tip um, rising tips. <laughs> Does that make sense? I, just have, I do have some quick tips on how to make it rise faster. The they're going to they're gonna be in the recipe down below and then they're also in my brunch cookbook. If you haven't already gotten that, you should go over to Amazon and check it out or download it on my website. But anyway, if the dough is right here, I'm going to set it aside for a little bit because we're going to work on making the chocolate filling. Now, I'm gonna, this recipe makes two of these um, basilopitas and we're going to make them in the shape of a wreath. So the first one... I'm gonna fill with my own homemade chocolate filling. And then the second one, I have some chocolate hazelnut spread. You can use your favorite, like Nutella or merenda, or maybe a homemade version. And I do have a recipe of a homemade Nutella, and I'll link that in the cards up above. But let's start making our chocolate saucepan. I have some granulated sugar with some unsalted butter. I'm gonna bring that, um, I'm gonna cook that over medium low heat. 
keeping an eye on it and stirring it also every, every so often. And we're gonna do that until everything melts. And then in this other bowl over here, I have some semi-sweet chocolate, a little bit of salt, and some cocoa powder. I'm also gonna add to this a little bit of ground cinnamon. And ground cinnamon adds a really nice flavor that complements the chocolate really well. It just goes together so nicely. And then once the butter and sugar melts, I'm gonna pour it over the chocolate and mix it all together until the chocolate and everything melts. So the heat from the butter and the sugar will help everything melt and come together. And it's just gonna smell incredible in your house. Just gonna to wanna to eat this whole thing as it is. But for now, we're gonna set this aside because we have to fill our basilopita with this. Dust our work surface with some all-purpose flour. Take all this dough out, cut it into two equal pieces. I'm gonna put one aside. And then we're just gonna roll this out to a big rectangle, about 13 by 19 inches, or um, as big as you can get it, so it can be about a quarter inch in thickness, so that way you can have a lot of surface to spread that chocolate on, onto. That looks about right. Now we're gonna take our chocolate sauce. This, is, this one's still kind of warm, so we'll do the chocolate hazelnut spread first. We're just gonna take all of this chocolate hazelnut spread, and then we're gonna spread it all over the top of this rolled out piece of brioche dough. And then we're gonna roll it up, first covering the spread with whatever bits of dough are at the edge. And then we're just gonna roll it up the wide way, the, from the widest part, because you wanna make a big, long rope. You'll see what I mean. Press it together, and you can stretch it out just a little bit longer, as long as it can get. Then, either with a knife or a dough scraper, just cut straight down the center of the rope. And then look at that. You're gonna have layers and layers of chocolate and brioche, and we're just gonna fold them around each other, just like that, kind of like in a braid pattern, like a rope. Just keep twisting it from both sides. Take a baking tray lined with parchment paper, put it onto the baking tray, and now we're gonna attach the ends to form a wreath. And you can kind of like intertwine them just like that. We're gonna set this aside and cover this with plastic wrap. I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm gonna roll out my second piece of dough into a rectangle just like we did with the first one. Easy peasy. And now we're gonna take our homemade chocolate spread and we're gonna spread it all over the top roll it up, cut it down the center like we did before, and form it into a wreath shape, just like we did with the hazelnut filled one. So here we have both of our chocolate wreaths. This one was really warm and a little bit hard to handle. If they do get a little bit hard to handle, you can pop it in the freezer for five minutes so it can firm up a little bit. But honestly, once it bakes, you won't be able to see any of the imperfections. Now you can take your little kerma, which is like the little, it's a little coin. This is a dime that I've wrapped up with a little bit of aluminum foil that basically whoever gets it is considered the lucky one for the, for the new year. That's a nice fun tradition that Greeks like to have, like to do at, on New Year's Eve or on New Year's Day. I'm gonna cover this with, with um, plastic wrap. Set it aside until it rises for about 45 minutes and I'll show you what it looks like when it's ready. So after about 45 minutes or so, your brioche is gonna puff up and rise and just be beautiful and ready to bake in the oven. You want your oven to be preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we're gonna create an egg wash to brush on top. I have two eggs here and to them, I'm gonna add a little bit of milk, about two to four tablespoons. You could add water as well if you wanted to. Not as well, you could add water instead. Mix it all up and then we're going to brush the tops of this so that way they can be beautiful and golden brown. 
So I'm gonna bake these one at a time in the center rack. If you have a convection oven, you can put them both in at the same time and just rotate the pans halfway. But they're gonna take anywhere between 25 and 30 minutes or until they're beautifully golden on top. And if you insert a toothpick in the center, it'll come out clean and not doughy. Once they come out the oven, you want them to rest a little bit, a good 15, 20 minutes. That's probably the hardest part. So that way that everything can just settle and cool down. And I'll show you what they look like as soon as they're ready to cut into. The hardest part of making this whole recipe is waiting for these to cool down until they're safe enough to eat. Now you want to make sure that they cool down for a good 20 minutes so that way the dough, the steam distributes evenly and everything just settles and the chocolate doesn't burn your mouth. So this is the one with the homemade chocolate sauce and this is the one with the chocolate hazelnut spread. I mean they're both going to be delicious, I just know it. I just know it because I've been recipe testing these this week and um, I, I think my pants are not going to fit by the end of this. But you guys make sure you call friends over and you share this so that way you don't have that problem. You see all those swirls in there? I think that that's beautiful. Let's take a bite of the chocolate hazelnut one. Oh my goodness. The chocolate hazelnut spread is still soft and melted. Oh my god. Almost too good for sharing, but you know what? <laughs> they say sharing is caring, so I'm definitely going to share this with the family. Let's try this one now. Same chocolate swirls. This looks a little bit gooier than the other one. Let's see. delicious it's much richer much more intense chocolate flavor because of the semi-sweet and the cocoa powder the cinnamon just gives it that nice kick of heat in the back all the flavors go so well together in both of these the maclefi really shines through and just you know lets you know that this is the tureki dough that you're eating you guys have to go over to the website dimitrisdishes.com or underneath the description box make this recipe start a new tradition i mean i think that you guys are going to love this let me know if you added any any other add-ins in here or what changes you've made in the comment section down below i hope you all have a happy and healthy new year and i can't wait to see you again here right over here next year Thank you very much for spending time with me today. Yes, us.